All of the major fires in uh, western Oregon are on east winds. They come over the Cascade Mountains on this west side here and uh, dry out the vegetation. Uh, they, if they're occurring during the dry time of the year, um, they spread fire very easily. The weather event that happened was so extreme. You talk to many of the people who have worked for so long in the woods, uh, it's not something many people have ever seen. The wind was blowing uh, towards town. Instead of the, usually the wind there blows up the river, it was blowing the wrong way. Uh, and then came a red flag warning and red flag watch uh, from the National Fire Weather Service. I mean, winds were in excess of 40 miles an hour, easter winds, uh, pushing that fire with spotting two to three miles out in front of the active fire line. It looked like a winter storm had gone through. There were trees blown over, there were branches broken, uh, the highway was just littered with uh, debris. Uh, it didn't seem like a September day. The wind was blowing so hard, there were limbs and, and pieces of tree and pieces of ash that was, I mean, I mean, when I say pieces, I'm talking big ones, that were literally flying over our heads. We had 50 mile an hour winds coming from the east, 95 uh, degree temperatures, single digit humidities. And that combination with the heavy fuels of the forest created an explosive event that was really terrifying to see. The fires we had on Labor Day were, were major winds, 40, 50 mile an hour gusts, so it created explosive events. Um, just like the 1933 Telemuc fire, the woods literally exploded. A uh, combination of dry fuel, massive amounts of fuel, and a heavy east wind. I've been on a lot of these, I've never really been scared before, but that particular fire was scary. And it was also pitch dark uh, in the middle of the day. It was, it was bizarre because the sky was so dark, but it was mid-afternoon. And the street lights at three in the afternoon are coming on. The day I walked out and it was pretty much dark and the street lights were on and I thought, holy cow, you know, I didn't realize what time it was. Well, no, it was actually two o'clock in the afternoon. It wasn't, it wasn't nighttime. There was a sense of, this is really bad. I've been around fires, I've responded to fires, but this was something that I've, I had never seen before. And so there was just this eerie, almost an eerie calm, but strange sense of there's this giant monster out there. 911. Uh, yes, I'd like to report uh, a fire. It's in between Bogus Creek and Williams Creek, off of 138. And you saw the flames? Oh, yes. Okay. Yes, it's burning it. It's burning the old uh, Williams Creek fire scar. 911. Hi, I'd like to report a uh, forest fire in Douglas County. Where at? It is uh, It's up Canton Creek, east of Glide. Let's report a fire. Okay, and is this a new fire? Because uh, we have a bunch of big fires up there. Where are you seeing a fire at? I am at milepost uh, 38. In one one emergency. But there's a wildfire at milepost 37 on 138. Nine one one. Yeah, we need uh, choppers up here in Susan Creek. We got a fire. We're trapped in here in Susan Creek Road, and it's going hot right now. The wind's blowing hard. We need help. Uh, I first heard about uh, um, fires um, up in the Glide area on what would have been Monday, uh, Monday night, which was Labor Day. We had uh, warnings, you know, that there was going to be some high winds. So Tuesday morning, the 8th, we had uh, a report uh, that there was a fire burning uh, up on Forest Service land up the North Umpqua in the Bogus Creek area. And this fire that you're responding to is now referred to as the Archie Creek Fire. Got the Archie Creek. And I, and I grabbed one of the county commissioners, uh, Commissioner Freeman, and we decided to take a drive up to Glide and see how the fire um, was coming at French Creek and, and go up and take a look at this other fire that the Forest Service uh, was aware they had burning, but. Um, at that time, I don't believe they had anybody on the fire yet. We encountered um, a firestorm like I've never seen. We're advising you that we just got a report of another fire. It's at Seven Creek Road and Star Mountain Lane moving quickly 
and they're advising that there are subjects trapped in that area. We first made it up as far as just past Susan Creek up to about the old Frontier store and that's when we encountered you know fire on the hill. We literally drove up through the fire. There's spots where the rocks are coming down, lots of debris flying around in the air, uh, and fire on both sides of the road. We do have a large column of smoke in the area. I'm still a little ways out, though. So. 70, it looks like it's both sides of the road, top of Frontier Hill, just on the east side of it. It's all the way down to the asphalt. They're actually fighting the three helicopters. We uh, found out that there was some folks that were trapped in their home. I had a lady drive out in front of me uh, from a driveway and stopped her car, stopped me right in the middle of 138. Now, mind you, the fire was burning all around us at that time and she was in a panic because she was concerned that her husband was in the house up the driveway and <clears throat> he was burning to death. That's what they told us. We have a new fire uh, right down here in a house on fire and evidently somebody's trapped in it. We turned the truck around and we headed up the driveway and the fire was burning all the way around us. It was like driving in a tunnel of flames. We came back down and we're calling this in on the radio as we go. Our sheriff, uh, when I got back to 138, our sheriff was the first vehicle that came up and he asked me, which, where's the address? And I told him, I said, it's bad up there. I don't know, I don't know that you can survive that. He didn't even hesitate. Uh, and the sheriff drove uh, right on through the fire up to where the people's house were. We drove up there and assisted them in getting out of their home and getting, getting out of the fire. It's really that much smoke and fire around them. They really had no idea that the fire was coming up the hill or was about to engulf them. Guys, the residents who were trapped at 29836, they've both been evacuated. Our fire is all around the residents this time. And we went on up further uh, up to Binmore Hill and contacted the residents up there, um, informed them that they needed to leave. And then we continued up the river further, and that's when we, we really found um, fire burning, um, very hot, very erratic. Uh, I mean, it, the fire was really blowing up on us um, on both sides of the highway. We got through it and about the time we got through it, all the units below us were, were saying, you know, the, the road is impassable. You can't go through anymore. We need to stop traffic at both ends and turn people around. It was very dangerous traveling the highway at that time. That was early in the morning. I mean, that was before noon. Everything from Star Mountain west to Hill Creek. The video is only a minute and 46 seconds. Uh, as we get through, we're back into blue sky. And like it's just a beautiful summer day. And uh, we uh, were able to help do that evacuation at that end of the fire. <laughs>